In the last video, we talked about um, symmetry, just talking specifically about points. But now, curves and lines are just a bunch of points put together, it's just a collection of points. So that same concept that applies to individual points, then we can use to apply to curves and lines when we talk about symmetry. So we're going to go through um, some examples here. These examples are asking us to find the intercepts, first of all, and then to indicate whether the graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, the y-axis, or the origin. So, first things first, let's talk about our intercepts. So, we'll have x-intercepts, and we'll have y-intercepts. Now, since our graph is drawn here, we really just have to read these off. And we're going to pretend that these go through some nice points here. So our x-intercepts looks like we'll be at negative 2, 0 and at 2, 0. And our y-intercept, it crosses the y-axis here at the point 0, comma, negative 3. Now let's talk about symmetry. Whenever we look at symmetry just visually, we want to try and see is there somewhere where we could basically draw a line down through the middle and fold it over in on itself or just look to see whether it has that balance. In this picture, can you picture drawing a line or imagine drawing a line down through the middle of that graph there? Now we've got a perfect balance on either side of that line that I drew in. Well, that line is the y-axis, so it looks like we have y-axis symmetry here. Now, we could check that if we took any point we wanted to, like this point would be 3, 6. According to the definition, in order to have y-axis symmetry, you have the same exact y value, but the x value change signs. So if that's true, we should have the point negative 3, 6 on here also, and we do. So there is y-axis symmetry in this one. Okay, let's look at another one. Here we have another one. And again, first of all, we're going to list our intercepts. So we have x-intercepts and we have y-intercepts. So for our x-intercepts, it looks like it's crossing the, the x-axis here at negative 4, 0. And it looks like it's crossing the y-axis in two places here at 0, 2 and at 0, negative 2. Now let's talk about our symmetry. So again, I can imagine drawing a line right down through the center of that graph and now I've got perfect balance on either side. Well this line happens to coincide with the x-axis so I think there is x-axis symmetry here. Now we can double check that against the definition. Um, if I take a point here, which would be, this is the point 5, comma, 3. According to the definition, 5, negative 3 should also be on the graph. The same x, but the opposite y. And in this case, there absolutely is. So there is x-axis symmetry. Now, let's look at this one. x-intercepts and y-intercepts. For our x-intercepts, it looks like we are crossing the graph here at negative 4, 0 and at 4, 0. And it looks like we're crossing the y-intercept, the y-axis rather, for our y-intercepts at the point 0, 4 and 0, negative 4. But let's now talk about symmetry. If I were to draw a line straight down through the middle here, through the y-axis, can we see that we have perfect balance on either side? Absolutely. So this has y-axis symmetry. Now, it also has other symmetry though. If I were to draw a line down here through the x-axis, we also have perfect balance on either side. So this has x-axis symmetry as well. Now circles are beautiful because not only do they have x-axis symmetry and y-axis symmetry, they also have origin symmetry. If I were to draw a line, a diagonal line here, basically, through the origin, again, we have perfect balance on either side. And if we were to take any point that we wanted and say this is 1, negative 4, then uh, negative 1, positive 4 would also be on there. Remember, changing both of the signs. Okay. 